Welcome to First Missionary Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Calvin Smith. I want to thank you for allowing us to share this Sunday morning with you. But before, just think about it. God can be mindful of anything in the world, but he's mindful of us. He's mindful of us. He's concerned about us, and he loves us. Oh, Father, we don't take you for the granted this morning, and we just want to say we love you. We love you, Father. We love you, Father. Good morning to all that are here in the building. Thank you for coming and joining us and worshiping with us today. We want to welcome in our social media streaming audience. Thank them for joining us today. You are in for a treat today. The word is going to be rich today and it's going to change our lives. So I just want you to get comfortable. Be ready to receive what God has in store for you today because make no mistake about it. It's no coincidence that you are here. God has a divine appointment with you today. God has a divine appointment with you today. Amen. You may be seated. At this point, we're going to transition into our announcements. Good morning, members, guests, partners, and friends, and welcome to First Missionary Baptist Church, where we are empowering believers to expand God's kingdom. And thank you for watching and listening to this week's upcoming events and announcements. FNBC would like to wish a happy birthday to all members and guests who are celebrating their special day on today or this week. If that is you, please stand at this time so we can recognize you. And if you are watching us via Facebook Live or YouTube, please put it in the chat that today is your birthday so we can recognize you. Happy birthday and may God bless you with many, many more from the FNBC family. FNBC has eliminated our debt and we are debt free in 2023. Currently, our goal is 100% met to God be all glory, honor, and praise. Thank you to everyone who pledged, prayed, sowed a seed, and gave unto our debt-free campaign and continue to stand and believe and trust in God that because of your giving, your household is debt-free as well. We are debt-free FNBC in 2023. Today is Communion Sunday in remembrance of the body and blood of Jesus that was sacrificed, broken, and poured at the cross for us. For our online viewers, please make sure you have communion ornaments ready such as water, juice, and crackers or bread so that you can partake in communion during service along with us. FNBC, we are proud and excited to announce that our very own Pastor Calvin and Lady Tanya Smith will be the featured guests on the TV broadcast Conversations with Christopher. And this TV show is hosted by none other than Dr. C.S. Wilson. This will air locally in Martinsville, Virginia on Thursday, August 10th on station BTW21, and there will be more details to come about how we in North Carolina can watch this segment. We are so proud and excited as Pastor Smith gets to share his teachings about the kingdom and how Pastor and Lady Smith get to share their experiences as being a pastor and first lady at First Missionary Baptist Church and being in ministry in Thomasville, North Carolina. More details to come about how we will catch this segment. FNBC members and guests, please save the date for Thursday, August 17th at 7 o'clock p.m. as Pastor Smith travels to Lambert Chapel NBC Church in Siler City, North Carolina to preach at their revival entitled, I Choose to Worship. The host and pastor of Lambert Chapel NBC Church is Reverend Kevin Leak. Also, don't forget that we still are having our FNBC Community Fun Day. We have rescheduled our date now to Saturday, September 16th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. It is still not too late to get in on volunteering so that you can let your light shine to our community. Please see Sister Tiffany or Sister Tara to sign up and volunteer today. FNBC, 
we are blessed to be a blessing and what a privilege and honor it is to give unto God our tithes, offerings, and gifts of love. There are four ways that you can give unto our ministry. You can give in person during our 1045 a.m. worship service. You can use the Givelify app or Givelify website and give online or your mobile device. Search First Missionary Baptist Church when you use Givelify or you can mail in your tithes and offerings. Remember, God is our source and we give with a cheerful heart. This is just a friendly reminder to please silence your cell phones at this time. Remember, there is no food or drink in the sanctuary and please limit movement as the word goes forth on today. This concludes our announcements and upcoming events for this week. We are First Missionary Baptist Church, and our leaders are Pastor Calvin and Lady Tanya Smith. We are located in the beautiful city of Thomasville at 103 Church Street, and you can contact us at 336-475-9632. Thank you for your continued support and generosity to our ministry. And remember, at FNBC, we are empowering believers to expand God's kingdom. Stay in the blessing. Amen. At this time, y'all know what time it is for us to get prepared to give our offerings into the house of the Lord. Amen. So we're going to get the offering confession up and we're going to stand and thank God that we're able to sow into his house. Amen. Amen. It is offering time. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? <laughs> y'all sound ready. <laughs> All right, let's go. Lord, I thank you for blessing me with this opportunity to worship you with my tithes and offerings. It's a privilege to give my talents, gifts, and my resources to Fish Missionary Baptist Church to empower our believers to present the gospel to this community. We sow this seed, this is this same tree, being obedient to your word. You said that if I give, it should be given back to me. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. Lord, I thank you that I don't for anything and that you're able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to me in abundance. So that I'm always and in all circumstances furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ushers have charge. we want to take the time to honor any first-time guests that we have in the building 
If you want to raise your hand or stand, we'd like to just honor you for joining us today. Any first time guests in the building? Amen, amen. Welcome. We're glad you're here with us. Thank you for joining us today. Amen. All right, if you're online, if, you, if it's your first time with us, also put in the chat that it's your first time with us, and we will uh, reach out to you. Amen. Well, at this point, we get ready to receive the Word of God. We get ready to receive the man of God that's an awesome preacher and teacher of the Word. If you don't mind, stand to your feet with me as we... Amen. <laughs> Amen. As we bring up our, our shepherd, our visionary, Pastor Calvin Smith. Come on and give God some praise. Amen. Come on, y'all give God some praise. You can do better than that. Have God been good to you? If God been good to you, let's just take about a 10 second worship break. Can we do that? Come on and put your hands together and give God some praise up in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. How many of y'all were going to rejoice with me and going to be glad in it? Amen. We're so thankful. Amen. For all of those birthday people, we want to say congratulations. And, and my, my grandson had his birthday on August the 1st. Cor, y'all give him a big God bless you. Amen. I said he was six. He said, no, granddad, I'm seven. Amen. So we, we thank God for that. We also thank God for all the, the first-time visitors and those who have been, not been here for a while. But I do want uh, you to celebrate with me uh, my next to my oldest daughter. Uh, she's here today, Courtney Clement, and then her daughter. Amen. Her daughter, Ocean. And, of course, you all have met Cor. Come on and give, give them a big God bless you today. Hallelujah. I'm just so excited that they're here uh, from Minnesota visiting with us, and we're just elated. And uh, we just had some wonderful times together, so we we're excited about that as well. Are you all excited this morning? Yeah. All right. Well, listen, without any further ado, I would like you to consider with me the book of Psalms. As David begins to share in this psalm, I think now what I'm going to do a little bit different this morning, most of the time when I give you a text, I'll stay with that text. But this morning, I'm just going to introduce my topic by the text, uh, and we're going to do it that way. Psalm chapter 77, verse number 14. Psalm 77, just one verse, chapter 14. And it reads thusly. Psalm 77, verse number 14 says, Thou art the God that doeth wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. <clears throat> Can I take this time to read it out of the Message Bible because it makes it a little bit more, uh, makes a little bit more sense. The Message Bible says, no God is great like God. <laughs> Can I say that one more time, y'all? No God is great like God. You are the God who makes things happen. You showed everyone what you could do. That's the text that I want to use today. Let us pray. Father, we're just so grateful for this day. We thank you, God, that, uh, for the gathering of your people. And now, Calvin, take the decrease and the Holy Spirit have the increase. God, speak to the hearts of your people today. I thank you, God, that ears are attentive to your word today. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of God will say to us today. Thank you, God, as your word go forth, it will not come back void, but it will accomplish that in which you have set it out to do, changing hearts, minds, destinies, and purpose. God, we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory today. Let every heart shout together, amen <clears throat> and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, Minister Kirkland, I mean, Minister uh, uh, Sinkler, did not know that I was going to use this as a topic, I don't think, today. But my topic today is going to be God's divine intervention. <clears throat> Let me say that one more time. My topic today is going to be God's 
divine intervention. Now, I want to go back and read this particular passage of Scripture one more time because it's going to make sense if y'all give me just a moment. Psalm 77, 14 in the Message Bible says, No God is great like God. You are the God who makes things happen. You showed everyone what you could do. And that's why I wanted them to play that song, y'all, There's None Like You. It, it, can I get a witness today that there is none like God? Can't nobody touch our heart like he do. Amen. But the latter part of this particular psalm is where I want us to focus on today. And it says, you showed everyone what you could do. Ladies and gentlemen, as of last week, God really showed himself to be mighty. God showed himself to be faithful. Uh, and not only what God can do, but God done already done it, y'all. He has already done it. And, and it is amazing to me uh, when, when you look back over the tapestry of your life and when you see purpose collide with destiny and then you got a little bit of God's grace mixed in, in the middle of it, how things can change in somebody's life. Is there anybody that can testify today that there was one time in your life when purpose meant destiny? And when purpose meant destiny, everything began to start changing. Can I tell y'all things now are beginning to start changing? And, and I'm just so excited. I know that the FMBC family is excited of what, what God has done, but I do want to take this opportunity to not allow this movement to pass us by. I, I, I want to recapture and I want to recant. Uh, I want to bring to some awareness what God has done because I don't want us to brush this off as something uh, that's just for this time and this moment because I believe that in this what God was doing, God is giving us a message. Now notice I did not say this great move of God. I said this movement of God. It's a difference between a move and a movement. A, a, a move basically is something that refers to an isolated incident. A, a move, Walter, is something that may just happen this time. But a movement is what we in, family of God. Somebody shout movement. We're in the movement because a movement is when a group of people get together to advance the kingdom gender of God to impact the social and economical and cultural fabric of today's society. We are in a time of a movement and not a move. And this is why I titled the sermon, God's Divine Intervention. Now, can I just take a moment to unpack just the title? Intervention actually is a deliberate act. Intervention, Walter, is a deliberate act of getting involved in a difficult situation. Well, why are you getting involved in this situation? Because you want to improve it or prevent it from being worse. You intervene. Well, let me see if I can make this make sense. Have you ever had anybody that was maybe an alcoholic or a drug addict and the family had come together and they're going to intervene on behalf of this individual? It's a, it's a bad situation. And what they are trying to do is to intervene collectively as a family to bring some truth to the situation where things could not get any worse. But a divine intervention. A divine intervention is something different because a divine intervention is when God becomes actively involved in changing the situations for the better. Let me say that again. A God intervention is where God actively gets involved to change a situation for the better or prevent it from getting any worse. This is God intervention. When you talk about God's intervention, family of God, you're really talking about the sovereignty of God. When we talk about the sovereignty of God, we're talking about the power of God. God has all purpose. God is in control of everything. When I look at Scripture, Scripture gives us a couple of examples. I just want to use a few of God intervening in somebody's life. 
My mind ran, ran down to Blind Bartimaeus. Y'all remember him, don't you? Blind Bartimaeus was standing on the side of the road begging when Jesus was going back to Jerusalem to be crucified. But Blind Bartimaeus heard something, the Bible declares, that he heard that Jesus was passing by. And when Jesus was passing by, Blind Bartimaeus, he didn't, wasn't concerned about what people was going to say about him because Blind Bartimaeus wanted to see. The Bible declares that he yells out, Son of David, have mercy upon me. And in that moment, God intervened in his life. I think about the woman at the well. The woman at the well who had been dealing with this issue for 12 years. The Bible says that she had spent all of her resources trying to find a remedy to her problem. And yet she found none, but she heard that Jesus was passing by, and she had made up in her mind, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I should may be made whole, and it was a God's divine intervention. Can I give y'all one more? I, I think about the man who sat at the gate called Beautiful. He had been sitting there for 38 years. I don't know when he had given up hope, but he had surrounded himself with people who were in just as worse shape than he was. And the Bible says that when in the moving of, of the waters, that he was looking for a change in his life. But he said that every time I got ready to step in the water, somebody stepped in before me and took my blessing. But he didn't realize that God was getting ready to intervene in his life. Now, I know I call these three witnesses. But if I could just get some of y'all's testimony, y'all could be able to testify that at some point in time, God intervened in your life. God stepped in at some point of your life and changed things around. Don't y'all snap in and look at me like God ain't did nothing for you. Because had it not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? God intervenes in our lives. Uh, last October 2022, uh, things were difficult here. The people hadn't come back from COVID yet. And uh, COVID-19, the attendance was down. <clears throat> and uh, so the Lord spoke actually to me and uh, Lady Tan. And the Lord told me, said, I want my church paid for. And uh, I know y'all talk about don't question God, but if, if I got a question, I can't ask y'all because y'all don't have the answer. So, so I, I, I began to start talking to the Lord, and I said, Lord, don't you know we just come out of COVID? I'm pleading my case, you understand. And, and, I, and I said, don't you know that, uh, that the attendance is down and, and, and people are not here to pay their tithes and their offerings? And God let me ramp on. And then, and then at the end of the conversation, the only thing I heard the Lord say is, uh, he said, I use Gideon. Gideon didn't have a whole lot of folk, y'all, those of you who are not Bible readers. Gideon didn't have but 300 people, but God uh, won a battle with 300 people. God said, I'm going to take the remnant that you have at FMBC. <clears throat> Well, I said, well, God, why, why is this so important? So he said, he said listen, Calvin, he says, uh, the world is getting ready to be shaken. I, I said, the world is getting ready to be shaken. He says, when the world get ready to be shaken, he said, I want, I want my church to be in position to be able to extend the kingdom of God. And you won't be able to do that, Pastor, unless your church is debt free. Wonderful thing, I brought the vision to the people of FMBC and uh, y'all looked at me like I was crazy. Thank God y'all didn't say anything about it, but you looked at me like I was crazy. Y'all probably was asking the same question that I was asking the Lord. Can't he see ain't nobody here? <laughs> but one thing about it, nobody said nothing. We, we cast the vision and, and you all grabbed hold of the vision. Come on, somebody. And, and, and Walter, we got to be real clear because the Bible declares in Psalm 29, 18, he says, where there is no vision, people perish. 
The word perish don't mean that they die. It doesn't mean that they vanish. But what the word perish means is they, they have no lack of constraints. They, 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 are, they are just wandering around. They, they have no purpose. They have no direction. They, they, in fact, their, 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 their potential is not maximized because they have no vision. And the Bible says when you have a vision, you have unity. And what I saw in FMBC is the people came together on one accord. Come on, somebody. And it helped me to understand, and I, help, I hope it helped you to understand, when we come together as a unit, when we come together as a corporate body, there's nothing that you and I, with the help of the Lord, cannot do anything. Nothing is impossible without God. The vision brings people together. The, bring, the vision brings people in unity. In, in, in fact, when we become on one accord, I think about the Tower of Bethel. Y'all remember that story, don't you? When, when the people had gotten together and they had a mind to work and they were building this structure toward heaven and God had to interrupt them because God himself said, these folk have made up their mind and because they're on one accord, there's nothing impossible for them. We came together as a body of Christ. We came together as one. We bought into the vision. Habakkuk says it this way. He says it in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Uh, Habakkuk says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision down and make it plain upon tablets, that he who reads it will run. I presented the vision. Y'all looked at the tablet, read what was on the tablet, and somewhere in heart between purpose and faith, Y'all decided we could do this. Come on, somebody. And we put our collective efforts together, and we, we ran with the vision that God has given us. And here we are, uh, 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 not even a year later, we're celebrating a vision that was cast in 2022, but now you have made it a reality. You ought to give yourself a God bless you. Now let me say this, let me say this, uh, when we got that blessing last week, and I'm going to tell you about the blessing because some folks still don't know, but we're going to share it with you. We had already put our hands to the plow. 70% of the church debt was already paid before God intervened. Amen. And so what happened was that the people let their faith uh, be displayed by their works. Because the scripture says faith without works is what? Dead. But you all put your faith in your works and you brought forth 70% of the debt. Then I want to say this. Uh, whatever you gave. Some of y'all didn't have it to give. You know what you gave? gave prayer. Thank you. We could not have made it without your prayer. Some people were not able to give, but they continued paying their tithes. Thank you. But because you were still faithful and you were still, you were still honoring God and you couldn't do but your, but, but, above your tithes, but you did what you could do. Thank you. Thank you for my, my seniors who are on a fixed income and yet you found some kind of a way to sow seeds to make this church debt free. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, uh, and, and, and see, there, there were some people who didn't have the, a, a lot to give. They didn't give out of their abundance, but they gave out of their lack. And I want to say that whatever that it was, everything God is, is, is going to be appreciative of all that we have done. But I'm going to give you three things, I believe, real quickly, that God wants us to understand about this vision. Number one is, is uh, enhance your expectation in prayer. If we have not seen anything with this intervention of God, we ought to now, when we pray, expect something. I will say that again. We have to now pray 
and expect something. Why? We already seen what prayer could do. Prayer is the most talked about discipline in the church, but it's the least one ever used. If you were to ask people how important prayer was, everybody in the believers say, you know, how vital and how significant and how important prayer really is, but only 50% of Christians pray. I believe that there are two reasons why people don't pray. Y'all want to know what they are? I believe the first reason that people don't pray is they don't see no results. Why pray and you don't see nothing happen? I'm going to say that again. Why pray and you don't see anything happen? And this is why a prayer 101 is very important. My wife does every first and third Saturday. Please tune in if you haven't because she's teaching us how to have effective prayer. And I think the second thing, uh, Walter, is we don't know how to pray. But this teaching today is going to change your life. It's going to change your prayer life. It's going to change how you look at prayer. And you're going to be able, if you implement these principles, you're going to be able to see God move even in your prayer life. Say amen. All right? When, when we learn uh, through this uh, divine dimension is that God, let me say this, I, and I want everybody to hear it. Stop everything you're doing. This is really important. Make a mental note of this. God hears your prayer. Now, this may seem simplistic to some people, but what we got to understand is there are some in the body of Christ that don't think they're worthy for God to hear their prayer. But God hears your prayer. In fact, I'm going to go to the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah 65, 24 says. He said this, I will answer them before they even call to me. Oh, good God Almighty. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayer. This is God talking about you and I because we are citizens in the kingdom of God. God said, look, I don't care what's going on. I'm going to answer your prayer. And even while you're praying, I'm going to already meet your need. See, the enemy got us hoodwinked and fooled in thinking that, that prayer is something because I'm not on the deacon board or I don't have no place in church or I'm not this spiritual guru that God does not answer. Are you a son of God? Are you a daughter of God? If you are a son and a daughter of God, the Bible says that God hears your prayer. That's very important. So many of us have been praying and not expecting anything. And, and so, so, so we, let's look at Mark chapter 11. Y'all make a mental note of this. Mark chapter 11, verse 23, 24. Because this is going to be one of these principles that's going to unlock the door to answered prayer. Y'all ready? Mark chapter 11, verse 23 says, For verily I say unto you, that who shall ever say, underline the word say, say is that you're speaking out of your mouth. You're saying it. In fact, some people declare this also as a, a form of prayer. So the writer is saying, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what is the mountain? Whatever difficulty that you're, that you're having in your life, whatever the challenges that you're having into your life, the, the writer says, Mark says, he says, speak unto the mountain that, that, that it will be removed and be cast in the sea, and you should not doubt in your heart. The only thing that will erase the prayer is doubt. Right? And, and so we have to really... Uh, hone in why doubt really occurs and we're going to talk about that in a moment but he says but shall believe in their heart so whatsoever things that they have said shall come to pass whatsoever things you desire when you pray watch this believe that you don't already receive them let me say that one more time so the Bible is giving us a principle here and he says that when we pray, we got to speak those things out. Well, what are we speaking out? We're speaking out the word of God. We're going to get to that in just a moment. All right? So once we speak the word of God to our situation, 
God says that we can cast whatever challenge that is into the sea. But we can't do it if we got doubt in our heart. Right? And then he goes on to say, but shall believe that those things which you shall say come to pass. Ye shall have whatever you say. Therefore, Jesus says, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you can have them. Now, this is my question to you all. If I'm praying for something, I'm, I'm putting my request before God. I'm putting my petition before God. Once I make that petition, then the scripture says, then I, I need to start acting like it's already done. You, you don't have to see it. See, some of us are looking for evidence, and, and sometimes evidence won't come to, to a little bit later down the road. But once I pray for something, the, the Bible said, watch and pray. Come on, somebody give me a blessing. In other words, when you get through praying, Walter, then you got to start looking and see what God is doing. See, we are praying and not expecting God to do anything. In this particular passage of scripture, I see not only prayer, but I see faith. You cannot have prayer and not have faith in the same ingredients. James 1, 6 and 7 says this, but let him ask where? In faith. Nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like the wave of a sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So now the question to me becomes, and maybe it's a question that you're asking, how do I increase my faith? How, Walter, how do I make my faith coincide with what I'm praying? Because there were some parts in Scripture where even those in Scripture said, Lord, you know, have mercy upon my faith. Help my unbelief. There are some things, family of God, that happen to us that will shake our world. I don't care how religious you are. I don't care what denomination that you are from. There are some things that will transpire in your life that will shake the very foundation of your faith. Can I get a witness? All right? And so, so one of the keys to that, I'm going to give you a key. Please make a mental note of this because this is going to unlock the prayer effectiveness but it's also going to unlock the faith effectiveness. First John chapter 5, make a middle note of it, verses 14 and 15. Listen to what it says. And this is the confidence. The word confidence actually means assurance. So, so the writer saying, uh, 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 he says, this is the, the assurance, this is the confidence that I have in him. Watch this, here's the key. That if I ask anything according to his will, Oh, y'all with me so far? So what is God's will? His word. Let me say that again, because we need to catch it. I'm giving you a key that's going to unlock some prayer doors that have been closed, because watch this. If you pray outside of the will of God, you have no authority. The only authority I have as a child of God, as a citizen in the kingdom of God, is the authority of God's word. When I pray outside of the will of the word of God, nothing is really going to happen. Listen to what he says, though. And this is the confidence that I have in him that if we ask, asking is praying. Y'all with me on that? If I ask anything according to his will or his word, he heareth us. And when we know that he heareth us, then we will have the petitions of what we have desired of him. This is a key to answer prayer. And I'm going to show you how you're going to use this key to unlock it. But can I tell y'all one thing about this passage of scripture? Two things, really. Uh, first thing is, prayer is a petition. Write it down, very important. See, we have been, and you're not, we're not wrong in um, identifying or defining prayer is a communication between us and God. That is true. That is true. But prayer also is a petition. The word petition actually is a legal document. Let this sink in. Petition really is a legal document. And, and so what it is, family, it's a letter making a formal request upon a particular promise. 
Let me do it this way. Walk. It's going to make sense. Prayer, then, because it is a legal right, is I'm legally making demand upon the promises that God has already promised. When I look at prayer from that perspective, then I approach the throne of grace and mercy from a different way because when I go in, I'm not going in as a vagabond. See, sometimes we approach prayer like we're not worthy. Now, I know we don't go before the throne of God arrogant, you know, or, or, or self-centered, but we go to the throne of God knowing who we are and our identity in Christ. Because it was the work and the redemptive work of Christ that gave me the authority to go in front of the throne of God and, make, and, and give a petition or a request. So Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, remember this, says this. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace in the help. So how do you come boldly? You come boldly because of your position and natural circumstance. See, see what we do, y'all, is we allow our circumstance to make us feel some kind of a way and when we feel some kind of a way, we disqualify ourselves from going before the throne of God. And your circumstance has nothing to do with your position. Are y'all following me so far? Your position gives you the authority to come boldly before the throne of God and to ask for grace and receive mercy. It's, well, let me do it this way. It's your legal right. See, we don't look at prayer like that, but it's our, as a citizens in the kingdom of God, it's our legal right to go in and petition God and say, hey, look, God, this is what the word says. This is what I'm going to, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Okay, let me do it this way. Y'all working me this morning. But this is going to be good. When, when you leave here today, you're going to be able to get some prayers answered. You're going to be able to pray, and when you pray, you go, once you start praying, you're going to start doing that right there. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open. So when you're seeking, once you ask, then you got to start. You got to start seeking. All right, let me see if I can make this any plainer. Okay, let's just say, y'all, that you need a healing in your body. All right, and so, and so now, as a citizen in the kingdom of God, Walt, I go into the spiritual constitutional library. I, I go into the kingdom throne of God, the spiritual library. When I go into the library, y'all, I'm going to ask the person, okay, where is the aisle dealing with healing? So, so they're going to tell me what aisle it is. When I go to the right aisle and I look up on the shelf and I see the book say healing, I'm going to pull that book down. Is this making any sense to anybody? All right, so when I pull that book down, I'm going to turn to Article Jeremiah, Section 33, Subsection Chapter 6, and it's going to say, Behold, I will bring it or bring to it health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. So now, when I go to the throne room of God, y'all, this is teaching you how to pray. I'm going to take and say, well, Lord, you say in Jeremiah, in Article 33, in subsection 6, in Jeremiah, that you're going to heal my body, so I petition you to honor your promise. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, okay, can I push the envelope a little bit further? Th then you may say, then you may say, okay, some other things are going on. Then you go to another aisle, y'all, and in this aisle you see the book of Psalms, but in it, it's article uh, it's, 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 it's the article is Psalm section 34, subsection 19. This is what it says. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. 
Y'all, y'all, I'm going to go over here because y'all ain't. Oh, over here, y'all, the Bible says in Psalm, when I pulled the book down, looked and looked at the book, he says, many are afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered us from what? All of them. So when I go into the throne room of God, I'm not begging. I'm saying, God, this is what your word says. If, if, you didn't, if you didn't mean it, you shouldn't have put it in here. But this is the promises. You said in your word, all your promises are amen and true. So I come to the throne of grace, and I'm bringing an article of, of, of Psalm 34. Now, wait a minute. Can I give y'all another? So some of us are walking in fear. We're looking around, seeing what the world lives and everything. Go to the fear aisle. Over in the fear aisle, you'll see article uh, 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 Second Timothy, section number one, subsection number seven, said God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of. So maybe somebody, maybe somebody is at a crossroad in their life and they don't know what decision they need to make. Then you need to go to Article Proverbs number three, chapter number five. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. Acknowledge God in all of your ways that He'll do what? That's what prayer does. Then somebody may say, I'm going I'm to end with this. Somebody need a door opportunity to open. See, all you got to do is go in the library, ask the librarian where it is, go on the aisle, find the book. I found this where people who want some doors open in their life, I found article Revelation chapter 3, subsection number 8. Watch what it says. He said, God opens a door that no one can shut for those who are faithful to him. So if I'm looking for God to do something, if I'm looking for God to open up doors, I'm going to go to Revelation and pull out and, and go to God and say, Lord, this is my petition. I'm given a legal document because I'm legal. I'm not Ill uh, illegitimate. I am legal, and I'm laying claims upon the promises of God. Can I tell you the next thing? Not only prayer is a petition, but prayer is also a permission. Watch this. God would never do anything on earth that man don't cooperate in. I know, I know we've been taught, we've been saying, God can do everything because God is all sovereign. And you're right to the point, but what God will not do, he will not violate his word. Right? And so we, we got this mindset, Walter, where God's going to do everything, so we setting back waiting for it, but God will not do anything on earth unless he have participation of his people. Are y'all with me? See, you must give God permission to intervene in your situation. God is a gentleman. He's going to not knock the door down. As long as you're going to deal with it yourself, he'll let you deal with it yourself. You'll keep running into the wall. You still won't help answer prayers. You'll be frustrated and everything going on. And he's just sitting there and saying, well, I mean, they, they got the legal right for me to open up the door, but they'll never uh, uh, invite me to come in. I just let them go ahead and do their thing because eventually maybe they'll understand that I'm right here and I can do what they can't do. We have to give God permission. There is, it, 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 John Wesley puts it like this. I really like this, y'all. Listen to what John Wesley says. Without God, man cannot. Without man, God will not. That's good, ain't it? Can I say it again? Somebody needs to put that on Facebook. John Wesley said, without God, man cannot. Without man, God will not. James, James uh, chapter 4 verse 2 says, you have not because you what? Whatever, listen to this is very important, y'all. It's going to turn your prayer life around. Whatever that you're not praying for, you're not trusting God for. If you're not praying about it, then it's a good possibility that you're still trying to work things out on your own. All right, and, and so, and so uh, uh, and, and then when I go to Luke, see, there, there's a, there's a, um, there is a, uh, a principle called the principle of cooperation in prayer. There's a principle called the principle of cooperation. Y'all want to see what it says? Ask and it shall receive. Seek ye to find. 
locking the door should be open. You have to invite to give God permission to co cooperate with you to bring heaven down on earth. Are you, are you with me so far? Prayer, let me say this, this is powerful. Make a mental note of this. This is going to blow your mind. Prayer is not telling God about your problem. Prayer is telling him what he promised to fix the problem. Prayer is not telling God about your problem. Prayer is telling God, uh, uh, is telling God what is it, uh, uh, what he has promised about fixing the problem. Jeremiah 1 and 12 says it this way. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I'm watching over my word. So why is it being answered, y'all? God is watching over his word. So what's my point? My point is whatever you're going through, it doesn't matter. You got a Google machine. It is really made real easy right now, y'all. I know when I come up, you had to get the Hebrew Dictionary, the Greek dictionary, uh, Vines dictionary, and you had to go through all of that. But all you got to do now is Google it. And once you Google what the Word of God says, God says that I'm going to see that my Word come to pass. So when you pray, all you do is pray God's Word back to Him, and He's a watchman over His Word, and He will make it come to pass. This is effective prayer. So now, Walter, watch this. So when I'm praying like that, now I got confidence. Not confidence in myself, not confidence that I can, you know, just some people can stand up and I tell you what, they can make people shout uh, because they done prayed this long, loud prayer. It ain't even reached the ceiling. Ain't got no word in it. You understand? Right? And, and maybe you say, well, I can't pray like nobody else. No, just go to the Word and pray the Word. Watch this. So prayer is a permission. Uh, now, God will not violate his Word. Now, the listeners, write this down, make a mental note of this. When I say God will not violate his Word, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible declares, it says, let us make man in our own image and our likeness. And then watch what God says. He says, let them have dominion. Underline the word let them. God has given you authority. And because God has given us authority, he's not going to violate what he's already done. So watch this. If you need a change in your world, it's up to you. Has nothing to do with God. Has nothing to do with God. See, we are trying to lay everything at the feet of God. And God has said, no, no, no. I've given you everything that you need to become all that I have created you to be. He said, I, he said let them rule. So God would not violate his word. I know, watch this, y'all. Y'all know the model prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? As it were, the prayer, the model prayer is not for you to go to heaven. The model prayer is for you to cause heaven to come down and interrupt your earthly affairs. Am I changing your perspective of prayer? All right? And, and so, and so if, if we don't like what's happening on earth, it's our fault. If we don't like what's happening in our life, it's our fault because we have not prayed the kingdom down and asked, given permission, and, and sent forth a petition and say, Lord, this is what you said, this is your promises, and I'm bringing you a petition, and I'm just going to stand on this because you said in your promises that this is going to change. Are you blessed? So look, I know my time is running out and I'm going to have to run. So not only do we need to, when we saw this evidence of God moving did I ever tell y'all, did I tell y'all what God did? No, I told you the vision, didn't I? So watch this, y'all. So we were $15,000 short. I'm, I'm telling you, because somebody on, on Facebook ain't heard it, y'all. So we were, we, we, we were $15,000 short uh, in, uh, in paying off the building. And, and I, I stood before y'all for three Sundays ago, and I said, listen, I believe in what we're doing. I believe in the vision. I believe what God is saying. And, and, I, and I didn't do it braggadociously. I don't know if that's a word or not, but can I use that? 
braggadociously. And, and I said, I'm going to pledge another $1,000 because I believe on what God was doing. When I pledged that $1,000, you know what my pledge was, my prayer was? Lord, touch the heart of somebody. I said, touch it. You said to Moses to stand before the people. Tell them the vision. I did what you told me to do. We short. So I petition you to make it come to pass. It's your vision. So that was on Sunday, y'all. On Thursday, I got a call from somebody that I had only talked on the phone one time in about five minutes. I met him three Thursdays ago for, for dinner for about 30 minutes. And this man of God, what he wanted to do was on last year, he wanted to back my ministry. He said, Calvin, if you want to go on the road, I'll back you. He said, I want you to get a 5013C. If you want to write books, I'll back you. If you want to be an evangelist, I'll back you. But I, I went and met with the man of God about three or four weeks ago, and I said, sir, I appreciate you believing in me. I said, but I don't believe God moved me this way. But I said, let me tell you about my church. Let me tell you about what God is doing in this little old bit, and they got a 5013C already. And I began to start telling the man of God about what God was doing here and how people had come together, how we had walked in unity, how we had worked corporately, how we had walked in on one accord. And I said, we right here. He said, well, Kevin, how much do you owe on the building? I said, well, we owe about $15,000, sir. And, and I was telling him, I said, well, look, you know, we're growing so fast. I really need to be in the community. I need to be meeting with people. I need to, I need to, my face need to be seen in the community. He said, well, how much do you need to kind of get some bills out of the way where you can go full time? I gave him a price. So when I made that decree on Sunday morning, on Thursday, I got a call from the man of God. And he said, listen, I'm sorry that it took so long to get back with you, but me and my wife been talking. And so what we have come up with, he said, now how much you say you owe on that church? I said 15000 He said, count it as done. <laughs> he said, look, he said, I'm going to take care of the $15,000. He said, but it's a caveat to it, Kevin. I said, oh, God, what this going to be? Caveat to it. And I said, well, sir, what is the caveat to it? He said, I'm going to give you another $15,000, but your leaders got a promise that they will put it toward your bills so you can go full time. Yeah. If that don't raise your level of ex expectation in prayer, if that don't raise your level of faith, I don't know what will. Somebody shout God. God. Yeah, he will. He'll do it. All right, so I know my time is running out, so I want to, I want to, so the second thing, not only are we going to uh, 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 enhance your expectation in prayer, but we're going to elevate, he's going to elevate our faith. See, in other words, now we can, tan, we can exercise our faith muscle. Why? Have y'all ever wondered why when God was talking to Israel to do something, he always tell him, say, well, you remember now that I opened the Red Sea. He said, you remember now that I, get, I fed you in manna when you didn't have anything to eat. Why did God do that, y'all? He did that as a reference point. And, and, and the reference point telling you is that if I did it then, so you, okay, I'm going to go over here. Because if, if I did it then for Israel, how many of y'all know God is not a respecter of persons? How many of y'all know if God did it for them, he'll do it for you? How many of y'all really know? I'm not talking about the, the, the fringe people, but I'm talking about people who don't got sold out and believe if God have this church debt free, how many of y'all know y'all can be debt free? How many of y'all know God can cancel your bills? How many of y'all know God can step into your hospital room? It's the faith. <laughs> a man, <clears throat> a man was walking along a cliff, and uh, he slipped. And uh, he fell over the side of the cl cliff, uh, but right when he, he fell, he grabbed a hold of a twig. So he was hanging on, walking to the twig with one hand. He was dangling off, 
of the, of, of, of the mountain. He looked down several hundred feet down. He saw death. And so he's hanging there on life, y'all, struggling, uncertain about what's going to happen next. And he yells out, is there anybody up there? Uh, he says, um, help me somebody. Uh, I'm dangling for my life. A voice comes out of heaven saying, do you believe that I can help you? Yes. Yes, I believe that you will help me. And then he yells out, look, please, somebody help me on this branch. A voice comes out of heaven again. He said, do you believe that I have the power to help you? He said, yes, yes, somebody please help me. Then the voice comes out again. He said, do you think that I have, do, do, do you believe that I love you? He said, yes, I know that you love me. Help me off of this branch. Then the voice says, let go. It was a silence. Then the man said, is there anybody else out there? We walk along life's paths. Uh, 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 sadly to say, we sometimes fall off the cliff of life. And we're hanging on with one hand. We, 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 our lives are uncertain. We, we, we are plunged. When we look down, we see nothing but destruction. And, and that's all that we see. We're, we're looking down to see the death. We're looking at destruction. And God is offering us an off-ramp. But we're now looking for somebody else. God says, let go. I know I'm teaching to somebody out there this morning. You've been struggling. You've been holding on to something. In fact, you are holding on to that branch. You don't know how much longer you're going to be able to hold on. You don't know if you got the strength in your hand. You can't change hands because you're holding on to that hand. And, and, and yet, God is saying, I want to rescue you. I love you. I got the power to change the dynamics of your life. But only if you would give me permission to come in and do what you can't do for yourself. If you could have did it, done it, you would have. Because you couldn't trust God. God has never let us down. I don't care what walk of life you come from. I don't care what you went through. I don't care what you're going through. God is faithful even when we were not faithful. God was faithful to us. Let go. We got this, this uh, cliche. I mean, if we could really just hang on to it, it would be really blessed. Let go and let God. Amen? All right. So how do I increase my faith? Number one, y'all know what it is. I'm not telling you no new information. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Amen. Hearing by the word of God. Hey, saturate yourself with the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Get, in, get into the Word of God. But the other thing is, rely upon your point of reference. Did he not bring you out of the last situation that you was in? Well, if he brought you out of the last situation, then it's a good possibility he can do the same thing. So now, no, let me go, because I, I, I know... I don't want to worry your time out. So enhance your expectations. Elevate your faith. Watch this. Enter into your inheritance. That's what we did. God brought us into our inheritance. We got to know and to understand who we are in the body of Christ. Nobody taught us this, y'all. But according to Ephesians 2.19, we are fellow citizens in the kingdom of God with the saints in the household of God. We are, we are citizens in the kingdom of God, which means then that I got rights, privileges, and benefits of being a citizen in the kingdom of God that I can lay claim to. Why? Because I'm a citizen. Galatians says this, and, and Galatians 3.29 says, and if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. You are the seed of Abraham. I, I, know, I know it may not look good. I know that people telling that you are not worth it. It may not, may not look like you are prosperous. Don't listen to the lie of the devil. Nothing changes your seed. 
If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, watch this, y'all. Watch, thank you, Holy Ghost. Everything you need is in the seed. You never plant an apple seed and go back to tell the, the apple, to, uh, the seed to become an apple. Why? Because the potential of being an apple is already in the seed. So the seed of Abraham is already in us, but that's our inheritance. And then Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worked all things for his counsel. So what am I saying? We have an inheritance, just like those blessed forefathers that have gone before us. They left us an inheritance. Watch this. But it's, let me do it this way. We look at life through one dimensional, the immediate now. God looks at life three dimensional, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. So this miracle is really not about us. It's about the next generation. Because now what we're passing on to the next generation is a church that's debt free. Which means then that when the new generation come on board, Brandon, y'all, all of y'all, when they come on board, oh, what do they do? They build on what we have already left for them. If we don't ever think about our family, our churches, we are just thinking about, see, some of us that got, the devil got our eyes so low that we can't see that what we're, the decisions that we make now is not for us. It's for the next generation, right? That's why God told Abraham, Abraham, come out of a bad situation, y'all. His son, his nephew, Lot, been following me. A lot got blessed by Abraham. And, and then a, a Lot's cattleman got in an argument with Abraham's cattleman. And then so Abraham gave Lot the choice. I guess Abraham was thinking that because he had been blessed uh, by following Abraham, that he was going to give him the best choice. Wrong. Didn't happen. Lot took the, he, he, he took the land that would look blessed. Abraham was, was bewildered. He was disappointed. He was disillusioned. And y'all know what God told him. I'm going to tell you what God told him. He said, lift up your eyes, Abraham, to the north, the south, the east, and the west. He says, however far that you can see, I'm going to give you that land. See, some of us are walking around with our eyes on our feet. We ain't looking out. We're looking down at our feet. And guess what? That's all you get. But if you lift up your eyes, all you people, lift up your head, all you gates, and be ye lifted up because the king of glory shall come in. We got to lift up our vision. So let me tell y'all what happened. I hope, I hope Corinne don't mind me sharing. Watch the generational blessing. Watch this. I'm convinced y'all the reason why we don't have more young people is because they don't see this happening on a, on a, a, a regular basis. Y'all know what Corinne did, y'all? Can I tell y'all what, what Corinne did? So CJ wasn't here that day. So I'm told that when Corinne, raise your hand, Corinne, let everybody see. Yeah, praise the Lord. Y'all give Corinne a, a, a God bless you. So Corinne told CJ, she says, do you know our church is debt free? Now, whether she knew what that was, I have no clue. But she could not wait to tell her brother that the church was debt free. Look at the generational blessing. Come on and give God a, 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 an applause. See, it's about generation. Uh, this is what Psalm 1 3 says. And we should be like a tree planted by the rivers of, rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in our season. Our leaf would not wither, means that my daughter and my grandchildren, because I'm a son and a daughter of God, that, that my blessings don't stop here. It overflows into my daughter, it overflows into my grandchildren and my children's children. In fact, the Bible says it will overflow to the third and fourth generation. So we got to stop being one-dimensional. It's not all about you. 
It's about us leaving a generation, leaving an inheritance for the generation. Now, when you look out into the world, I, I'm just so sorry to see what we're leaving the people in the world, but this is where my gratitude come in. Thank God we ain't in the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. God operates off a new system. So whatever happens in the world, he'll still bring $30,000 and drop it in your lap. That was y'all's key to shout right there. You missed it. All right, so not only do we elevate our faith, we enter in our heritage. I'm closing with this, y'all. I'm closing. Tell your neighbor he's closing. Don't believe it. So we, we're going to enhance our prayer. We're going to elevate our faith. We're going to in, in, enter in our inheritance. Watch this. Watch what we're going to do now. We're going to extend God's glory. Let me say that again. We're going to extend God's glory. Why? See, what I don't want y'all to do now, well, you know, the church pay for almost our paying tithes and offerings. Wrong. Now, you have a chance to do that if you want to. It ought to be between you and the Lord. But what I will say, you're cutting your own blessing off. If you think like that. Because why? Because now is the time to work begin. We, we couldn't do a whole lot of work before because we, had to, we were under the bondage of debt. And now because we're not under the, the bondage of debt, Michael, anymore, this is where the ministry starts now. And so we ought to be able to, in this community, I told y'all when I first got here seven years ago, we're going to take this community, even if we got to take it by force, we're going to take this community. Do I have about one or two people that agree with me that no matter what comes, no matter what goes, we're going to actually take this community by force? We got to extend God's glory. Now is the time for us to get to work. Now is the time that we extend God's mercy and God's grace. Now is the time that we be the salt of the earth, the light that sit upon the hill. Now is the, is the time that we become radical in our belief. Now is the time that we get engaged in events and activities in our community. Now is the time that we go out and compel the highways and the byways to come and to see the glory of the Lord. I'm going to close with this. Have y'all ever rode down the road and saw a billboard? Billboard, you walk down the road, you see a big billboard. What is the purpose of the billboard? So, so the billboard up there, y'all, so the billboard says, uh, if you need any legal advice, what's that, what's that place called? Dirk Schumer, whatever his name is. Bag in his shoe. Praise God. We got both of their pictures up there. And they, and they, but you, have you noticed that they never have the price on them, y'all? Uh, they just got the picture. But what does that sign do? It points the people to a product or a place. That's what we ought to be, y'all. We ought to be billboards. When people are going down the highways of life, when people on your job, people in your family, we ought to be billboards. Say, hey, hey, look, let's go see the glory of God because the glory of God is what you need. You don't need more finances. You don't need a better job. You don't, you don't need to supersede. What you need to see is the glory of God. And so I'm just so thankful today that God has allowed us to see his glory I wish I had about one or two people. My mic is going out, which is telling me it's probably time for me to stop. But I'm thank God I got another mic over here. <laughs> and I wanted to tell somebody before I go. Can I tell y'all something? I, I want to tell somebody this divine intervention with God has changed my life. Because now, Victor, when I begin to start praying, I'm going to pray like I'm looking for something. I'm not going to pray amiss. I'm not going to pray with doubt in my heart. I'm going to pray and believe that God is going to do what God has always done. Because how many of y'all know God is a good God? God will do what he said.
said that he would do. Is there anybody that's in here today that know that God intervened in their life had it not been for the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you? See, you missed your cue to stand up and give God some praise because had it not been for the Lord on your side, you don't know where you would be. You ought to give God some praise. When I look at now, when I pray, Walter, I'm going to start looking around because when I pray, I'm looking for God to move. Is there anybody in here that's looking for God to move? Is there anybody in here looking for God to do something? Shout yes. I, that, that was a weak yes. We got to bring y'all on in. Is there anybody in here that have made up their mind? You are not sitting on the crossroads of life, but you are looking, you are convinced, you are assured that God is going to do, he's going to move in your life. Shout yes. yes. Oh, that's still not good enough. Heaven could not hear you. I want everybody to put their voice together. If you believe in God, it's going to intervene in your situation. Is there anybody in here that need God to step in and move some things around, to shout some things around? If that's you today, you put your voice together and shout. Come on and give God some praise in this house. Give him praise. Come on. Give God some praise of what he has already done and what he's already going to do. Come on and give God some praise. Come on, somebody. I'm, all this week, I've been trying to maintain myself. But right about right now, if I could shout, I, will, I will burn this place up. But because I can't shout, I'm just going to jump up in town and tell God, thank you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for moving me. Come on, somebody. Somebody got a praise in their belly. I devil dare you to open your mouth and give God some praise in this place. Lift up your hands. Somebody said that when I, when I lift up my voice, when I praise God, blessings come down. Is there anybody here need a blessing from the Lord? Open your mouth and give God. Come on, let's take 15 seconds. God will do it. God can do it. God has already done it. Come on and give God a praise. Come on and give him a praise. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Teron. I'm getting ready to go. I'm going to take my family to dinner. I'm getting ready to go. But I remember over in Elijah, over in the book of Kings, uh, Elijah had already prayed and heaven had backed up for three and a half years but then Elijah got a word from the Lord and when he got a word from the Lord he sent his servant his servant went out one time he didn't see no evidence of his prayers being answered his servant went out the second time he didn't see the evidence of the prayer being answered but when he got back on the second time Elijah said hold up I hear the sound I hear the sound of rain is there anybody here that can hear the sound of rain you can't see it but I hear the sound of rain come on and give God some praise Come on and give God some praise. I hear it. it ain't come yet, but I know it's coming. You, is there anybody here that can rejoice before it comes? I don't need it in my hand. I just hear the sound of rain. And because I heard it, I'm going to rejoice. hadn't come yet but just to know that I hear it means it's on the way whatever that you're standing in need of I hope that this teaching today 
will encourage you and give you the necessary information that when you pray, you ought to respect something. You ought to expect something because God answers prayer. Then for those of you who don't know how to pray, I hope that I've given you some information that when you don't know what to say and you don't know what to do, you go to the Word of God and you find out what God's promises is and you go in boldly before the throne of God with the authority that you have. And you say, God, I'm not coming as a limp. I'm not coming as somebody that's illegitimate. I'm coming as your kingdom daughter. I'm coming as your kingdom son. And you declared in your constitution that I have these promises available to me. And I lay claim. I petition you now, God, to do what you said that you was going to do. I, I hope that now we can walk in unity and in faith. And in fact, I, I would have us to, to, to say this, that if anybody comes in that's trying to sow a seed of division, I hope y'all get rid of them. Don't listen to them. Don't talk to them. Don't entertain them. Because when we come together, y'all seen what happened? When we come together as a one unit, when we come on one mind and in one accord, God can use us to do things that we never thought that was possible in doing. Amen. Invite God in to your situation. It's the prayer of cooperation, allowing God to intervene, inviting the kingdom to interfere in the affairs of the world. That's what you need. That's what you want. Everybody wants a change in their life. Don't, don't, don't be like the man who's walking by the side of the mountain and he slips and falls and, and he's just holding on a little bit to his faith. He's holding on to his brokenness. He's holding on to his disappointments. He, he's holding on to his failures. He's holding on to his uncertainties. And God is saying, let go. I got you. I, I got you. In fact, God said, I know where you are. In fact, I know you so well, I know even the hurls upon your head. I know what makes you percolate. I know what makes you think. I know what makes you move. God said, let go and let me. Is there anybody today who have heard this message who want to ask Christ to sit upon the throne of their heart? Is there one today? I forgot to tell you about the last intervention. It was the intervention where you and I were going to hell. But God, Jesus Christ, God loved us enough that he sent forth his son to intervene on our behalf. Because had he not intervened, we would not have this opportunity to be in the family of God. Thank God for Jesus. That when he had the opportunity to come off the cross, the Bible says he could have called a, a thousand legions of angels. And yet he knew you and I were going to be in this moment. He knew that you and I were going to need a savior. He knew that he had to intervene to bring the kingdom of God and let it manifest in earth. This is what communion is about, y'all. It's the kingdom of God being manifest. Is there one today? who want to pray the sinner's prayers and say, Pastor, I want to invite Christ to sit upon the throne of my heart. If that's you today, I want you just to drop your hand in the air and say, I, I want to. I want to receive Christ as my personal Savior. And then the second call is those who have a, a, a straight, who have took their own life in their own hands and found out that it wasn't as good as you thought it was. This, this is the good news, y'all. It don't matter where you've been. It don't matter what you've done. It don't matter what you've said. God is standing here right now with his arms wide open inviting you to come back home. His prodigal son and his prodigal daughter. Will you come? Will you answer the call of God today? Because when you look at the fabric of your life, you know that something's missing. You know that there's more to God than what you are experiencing. 
God says, let me show you my glory. Let me show you the fullness of who I really am. Will you come? If that's you today, I want you just to drop your hand in the air if that's you. And the third call is you're saved and you're sanctified and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but you want to make FMBC your church home. Would you come? This is your opportunity to come. Yes. You ready? Praise God. Come on, we got one. Come on to give God a glory. Come on, we got two. Is there any more? Are there any more? Who looked at our vision statement and said, I believe that I can help push this church in where God will have us to be. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to get through this. Amen. Praise God. Amen. This is Deacon Dalton. Lexington, North Carolina, he was a, uh, the deacon there, and he's been coming and sharing with us uh, for about six or seven months now. Uh, uh, I, I call him on a regular basis. Uh, he's, uh, he's just a, just truly a man of God, and I'm so honored, I'm so honored that he has chosen First Missionary Baptist Church to come and to serve. Y'all give him a big God blessing. <laughs> This is a, a, a friend that I guess we go back over 25 or 30 years. And uh, she used to be one of my parishioners long years ago. And uh, some things transpired. And I left the church and, uh, and I left a lot of friends behind. So for the story that was told to me, and I believe it's the truth, she had been looking for me for years. For years. She had been looking for me for years. And she run across somebody that found me on Facebook. And, and they told her where I was. And since she had come, she did not miss that one Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So this is Miss Canetta Mike McIntyre. So what we're going to do, we're going to set up a, a, new, a new members orientation for you both. Uh, and uh, we'll be getting back with you in regards to that. But I just want you to turn around. And I want your new family to see you all. <laughs> you will were, you were hear me referring, you will hear me referring to this young man as Deacon Ernest Dalton, and I will continue to uh, to address him in that manner. Welcome, uh, uh, Deacon Ernest Dalton, and welcome, uh, Miss Conetta McIntyre. Come on, family, y'all. And you can be seated. Praise the Lord, and we'll be getting back in touch with you. All right. Praise God. God is moving. I said God is moving. He will show us every time what he will do. He will do. Uh, am I missing something? I'm missing communion. Oh, that's why I'm so thankful that I got a lot of people helping. All right, praise God. Everybody got communion this. Y'all, I told y'all about that last intervention. And that last intervention is when Jesus was sitting around the table. When my wife get emotional, I get emotional. So, can I take a sidetrack right here? So, y'all don't know what we've been through. We have prayed and labored and prayed and labored, and now we are seeing the fruit of our prayers. I see the fruit of our, our prayers in our remnant. 
thank God for the remnant of this church because had it not been for the remnant I don't know what the, we, we would even be existing today had it not been for our seniors and our remnant thank God for all of our leaders all of our new ministers about nine months ago I didn't have nobody except me and Lady Tan and now I got five preachers ain't nobody but God and you know what's even better than that, Walter? Is that we're in a place, and in a house, and in an environment where the Spirit of God reigns. And the people that are here wants to be here. And I can't tell you how thrilling that is for a pastor to be where a, a sheep, a flock, everybody's on the same court. And it makes it a whole lot easier. To lead the sheep when they're the sheep not jumping off the cliff. Amen. So Jesus sat at the table that day knowing that he had to intervene for us because there was nobody else to do it. Uh, Moses could not do it. Gideon was a great warrior but he could not do it. David could not do it. So God wrapped himself up in, in earthly flesh. And John 1 said, the word became flesh, and he dwelt among us. That's how much God loves you and I, that he came down to redeem you and I back to himself. So I want to say something to you today. Every time you get down, every time you feel lonely, every time you feel isolated, every time you feel like that you want to give up, look to the cross. I said, look to the cross. Because everything that we encounter, Jesus knelt on that cross. And he looked at his disciples and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. In this breaking of his body, there's also healing elements. If you are standing in need of God touching your body today, when you take this, this wafer, I want you to uh, decree, declare 1 Peter 2.24. First Peter, those of you who are going through physical ailment, when you take this element of bread, I want you to say, Lord, I'm taking this, I'm, I'm petitioning you on First Peter 2.24 that by your stripes, my body is healed. Let us take it together. And he said, likewise, this is, this is the blood. This is, this is my blood that was shed upon our, uh, for all of us upon that cross in Calvary. This shedding of the blood brings us back into a right relationship with God. Had it not been for the blood, there would be no remissions of sin. And so he says, let us drink all of this together. Amen. And you've said by your partaking of the Lord's Supper that we intend to lead, lead a new life following the commandments of God. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, sir. All right. Everybody good? Well, that was weak. Is everybody, everybody good? Yeah. Let's, let's do it one more time. I'm going to go over here. Y'all over here just ain't got it today. <laughs> Y'all know I'm just kidding. Everybody good? Yeah. Amen. I hope this word was a blessing to you today. Uh, don't let the enemy steal it. Still there? Oh, I, I got to tell them bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Our social media family, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. And we pray that you will join us on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, uh, amen, for, for Bible study. All right, bye. <laughs>
What an awesome word of the Lord. I hope it was inspiring to you. I hope it was challenging for you as you walk your Christian journey. Uh, and please join us again on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock and hope to be with you again on next Sunday morning.